my dear miniature friends. I'm Flo and you are watching Titus Painting Studio. First of all, sorry for the silly synchronization, but since I already recorded this video in German, this is the easiest way to bring you the videos as fast as possible and in my limited hobby time. Let's get right into it. Welcome to the first episode of the new series on this channel Road to Rangers of Shadow Deep. Well, you might ask, what is Rangers of Shadow Deep? Maybe one or the other has already heard its name. It's another great game from the author of Frostgrave, Joseph A. McCullough. And if you already know Frostgrave and its rules, Rangers will also be very familiar to you. The game mechanics are pretty similar. It's a very simple game system, you only roll a d20 every time and add or subtract a certain modifier. Nevertheless, or maybe even because of that, it's a game system I enjoy very much. And now we're jumping right into Ranges of Shadow Deep. If you're interested, you can order your copy on North Star Figures or Drive Through RPG. You can find the links down below. What I find very appealing is that Rangers doesn't fit into the classic categories of tabletop gaming systems. This fresh approach builds a bridge between tabletop skirmish war games like Warhammer and tabletop RPG games like D&D. Like in Frostgrave, there's also a character development system, so your figures can become more skilled between games but also can become injured. And the best part for me is that it's not based on a player versus player mechanic. Instead, it uses solo or co-op rules to fight your way through scripted narrative missions. Enemy encounters will appear, which are controlled by the game mechanic itself. If it was a PC game, you would call these mobs. Let's outline very briefly the story of the game. A ranger and her or his fellows are on a journey to fight back and collect information about the so-called Shadow Deep, an unknown evil which spreads its wings and threatens the human civilization. When I read the rules for the first time, I noticed the diversity of the different missions. For example, there's one mission which isn't played on the flat ground, but is played on a vertical board instead. In this special scenario, your ranger's fellowship needs to climb down broken stairs and make sure not to fall down or not to get hit by rocks or evil flies. In another scenario, for example, you need to fight through a swamp, in which swamp zombies may appear, of course, and collect clues about the bigger growing shadow deep. I don't want to flip through the whole book here because many other YouTubers have already done that. You must be prepared, however, that you will not find photos of miniatures in this book. I think that's a pity because colorful pictures of nicely painted figures are always one of my favorite parts in rulebooks. Here you will find only pencil and ink drawings, but they are still beautiful. Let's take the absence of the photos as our advantage so that we can give free rein to our own imagination. What am I going to do in this Road to Ranges now? First of all, I wrote out what we need for Rangers of Shadow Deep. For each mission, you need different enemy figures, different terrain, and markers. I also thought about maybe painting a background. All in all, I'd like to take you with me so that you can join me when I prepare everything we need to play Rangers. In the end, we will have a nice set of minis and terrain to do a let's play of Rangers of Shadow Deep. I don't know yet how long this will take. Let's just be surprised how many episodes that will be in the end. And since we usually play Frostgrave in a forest, forest grave so to speak, there's already some terrain and painted figures that we can also use for Rangers of Shadow Deep. This is what I want to show you now. After that, I'll quickly go through the list with you and we'll see what else is coming in the future. Have fun! So my dear people, here you can see an overview of what we already have. There is generic forest terrain. For example, these hills were made out of pink styrodur foam plates. Or even some plants. To be honest, these look a little bit like lamb's lettuce to me. Here's a big tree that was built out of a Pringles can. The AS clay was attached before it was painted. I'll probably build a few more of these too. Plus some dark forest terrain. As you may know, I usually paint my projects very colorful. Here it should be a little bit different and rather convey a gloomy atmosphere. In my opinion, this fits a bit better to the background story in which the heroes enter a deep forest. I also have fun trying something different than usual. Here is also a little bit of cemetery terrain from Games Workshop. 
For me, it's also a nice opportunity to get the Proxon out again within the context of this project, which is a very nice tool, but I hardly use it. Here you can see the part of my Frostgrave gang, which I would also like to use for rangers. And here on the left is the other part of the Frostgrave gang, which I don't think is very suitable for rangers. But especially the figures with the light effects I would like to use for rangers. I think that the light effects fit the threatening setting quite well. And here we have the enemy figures that we also used for Frostgrave. In order to make the many different models look related and evil, a uniform painting was chosen. A red light is the unifying element. Also, the figures can be painted quite quickly. If you want to know how I do such atmospheric paint jobs, you are very welcome to watch a tutorial of mine, which I already have on my channel. If you're now curious how this game works, I can recommend a video series of Guerrilla Miniature Games. I'm watching this series for the second time myself right now and you can find the link in the video description down below. But now let's take a look at the list of things we still want to build and paint. Alright everybody, let's take a look at the list. Excuse my handwriting please, I'll retype the list and make it available to you. In the video description you will soon find a link where you can download the list, then you can see at a glance what you need for Rangers of Shadowdeep. The list is sorted by mission and scenario. Each mission contains several scenarios, for example M1S1 stands for Mission 1, Scenario 1 and so on. On this page of the sheet you can see the listed terrain. It is not necessary to show everything 100% accurate. This is also described in the rulebook. If and how far I will deviate from the original I don't know yet. But I can well imagine to let own ideas flow into the project. I will not go through the whole list with you now. I just wanted to show it to you to illustrate that there really is a long road to ranges ahead. But the great thing is that it gives us a huge selection of what we want to build next. For example, for Mission 1 Scenario 1 we need 4 to 5 small buildings, a few rocks and trees, a small stream and 6 clue markers. In Mission 1 Scenario 2, for example, we fight a lot of spiders, so we need nest trees and web cocoons. I am especially looking forward to building water terrain with resin. I have never done that before because I have never dared to do it. Trees are also a task that I have put off for a long time. I am super excited and looking forward to learn something new here. On this page of the sheet I have listed the miniatures. For example, for mission 1 we need at least 6 zombies, at least 3 giant rats, a few spiders and a few survivors. You can look forward to me showing you miniatures from different ranges, which I think fit well with Rangers of Shadowdeep. Now, that was episode 1. I hope you had fun, anyway, I am really excited to this row too. I've had this idea in my head for a while now. I hope that by making the row too public now, I can motivate myself and finish the project. And maybe one or two of you will enjoy watching it too. If you liked the video, I would be very happy about a subscription, a thumbs up and a comment. Maybe you also want to show the video to your friends too. That would really help the channel a lot because of the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much. If you like, feel free to check out my other social media channels. On Instagram, for example, I regularly share new photos of the progress. There is also the possibility to support the project through Patreon. The whole income goes back into the project so I can show you other more great things. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Take care. Bye bye. Flow. Thank you.